Welcome to the Homeschool Together podcast. Where one working mom and a stay-at-home dad help you navigate the nuts and bolts of the growing and dynamic world of homeschooling. With a focus on early learners. Like me! All the ins and outs of building and maintaining your homeschool life. Homeschool! Find out tips and tricks to make things like this easier. I'm reading! And ultimately, enjoy educating your kids. And what's that last thing? Have fun together! Did I do good, Daddy? (laughs) Yeah, you did, sweetie. Good job. Hello and welcome to Homeschool Together. Thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome back to all you listeners. And if you guys haven't had a chance, hit the subscribe button there in your podcast app. It's one of the best ways for you to stay connected, get the latest episodes, and to help boost Ariel and I, you know, through the digital interwebs, boosting us up into the rankings and helping yeah. us to find new families is really important. Thank you. You guys are real people of genius. <clears throat> we know that. I'm not sure where he's going with this. Yet. Real homeschoolers of genius. And we know how important <laughs> art is to <laughs> our growing young minds. That was a circuitous route. And today we are going to be talking about art, art caddies, art. We love our art caddies. Crates, my, my whole art station. We know you have your six year old Picasso. Your other eight year old has made a million dollars selling NFTs on Open Ocean. <laughs> But you, as the as the young parent out there, want to have the best art space that you can. And today we're going to talk a little bit about that. So we're going to include a lot of links in the show notes below. I always do that for you guys because I love you guys so much. You work really hard at it, y'all. I do, man. I really do. I, I'm sitting there using all my Google Foo and getting all the links. So anyway, so let's talk a little bit about art. Art is one of those things that for early learners, can we can feel like is left on the cutting floor you know, when we're trying to do our cur- curriculums, trying to do math, trying to do reading, we're trying to get all those things done, sports, activities, co-ops, play to get get togethers. It's always at the end of our curriculums. You know, you're doing your blossom and root stuff and it's like, also do some art. And it's like, oh, Christina, I would love to do that art. <laughs> I would really love to do it. But gosh darn it, I ain't got time for it. But, you know, something that I, I feel is very important is art. And it's actually a big push for us. We, we've been doing it for a long time and art has been a big focus of a lot of the curriculum and a lot of the work we do on a day-to-day basis. You know, I just try to slip it in there really small. Hey, let's do a sketch. Hey, let's do some coloring. Hey, let's do this here. Yeah. But this qu- quarter, I mean, let's think of it as like a s- semester, this fall semester of homeschool with the boozes. Um, I have a lot of art classes. Our daughter is in two specific art classes um at our parent partnership at our parent partnership she's in a painting class and she's also in a clay sculpture class so right there not only is she doing art these classes have art homework that she has to do yeah and in order to you know the homework isn't very tough it's like do four art activities make four sketches it's i've already got 80 of those things and i'm done for the month but you know, for, for us, it's big focus. And also we're doing the prehistory. If you had a chance, check out our episode, a couple episodes back talking about the prehistory and in the prehistory, build your library and blossom and root both call out a lot of art activities. Yeah. Um, because and crafts. It's hard to, it's hard to bring in some tangible elements when you're talking about, you know, creatures that are, you know, existed 250 million years ago. And a lot of it is art focus, you know, whether you're doing fossil work or you're drawing things or you're, or you're, you know, sketching, you know, different, ani- you know, you're thinking up your own prehistoric animal because it just, you know, you look at all these prehistoric animals they are kind of wacky and crazy. And, you know, you kind of have fun and say, Hey, make up your own animal. I bet you that was a Precambrian species, <laughs> you know, it's a, you know, you could do it, but anyway, so art is a big thing. So today let's talk a little bit about our art. So why is art? Yeah. And art caddies most important. So I, th- I think just kind of want to dovetail. Star- staring at my beautiful art caddy right. to the right here. So and, yeah. and I promise we are going to do a YouTube video. Uh, yeah, we will. Talking about our art caddy and our art, our painting caddy as well. So we'll do two separate videos and let you guys know when those are available. Yeah, so I, I think to dovetail a little bit on that, for me, um, I, I think our, one of our goals this year is to be more intentional about art. Yeah. You know, I, I think that we, we've we always had art supplies around, mm-hmm. um, and we have had pieces of curriculum, like you're talking about, that require art. But one of the things that 
is the typical way that it gets used is like, oh, our three-year-old is kind of bouncing off the walls. We need to occupy the kids while we make dinner. Here, guys, here's here's the art caddy. Here's Do some, some art. Elsa coloring pages. You know, and yeah. it, it's 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 not it's not intentional. It's it's a yeah. filler activity. It's a check the box activity. Sometimes there are plenty of times when we do art intentionally, and I know when our our daughter was younger and our littler daughter was a baby, and she was contained in a high chair. That you and our older one did a number of like art activities together, where you would, yeah. you would sketch together. You would have projects. You were really we were intentional about it then. But then the the older that our younger one grew, as she got into a toddler. It was very, very mobile, very fast, and then into a preschooler. We have lost some of our intentionality with art, uh, and so we have recently revamped our art caddy. And like you say, our daughter is in these art classes, well, and so I think we're trying yeah. to like refine that focus on art, which is why this episode's kind of timely. For well, us. also on top of that, our preschooler is now to the age where she actually really enjoys art. She actually, she's and she's quite good. Yeah, she's quite good at it. And as far as like she she stays focused on it. It's yeah. not when I, we say good. It's she's, she she's she's happy to sit there and work at it. Yeah. and enjoy the process without it being frustrated, without losing interest. Um, so she's really she's in a good zone right now with art. Yeah, she's she's more into art than our older our older one was at the same age. It's very true. Yeah, like I, I think our older one was. You know, she was indifferent about coloring and markers. Yeah, you and stuff. you would use things with her, and you would try to. She was good about painting. Yeah. Um, our younger one also loves painting. She so loves painting. Yeah, we're at a good yeah. we're a good spot now to really kind of get back and reconnect with art because art is so important. We can explore so many, not just explore creativity, but you can learn history, you can learn science, all these different subjects through art. Um, so yeah, so recently you pulled down the art caddy from the top of the refrigerator where it lives, where it lives, um, for safety <laughs> and, uh, of my furniture. Um, and, uh, so you pulled it down and you went through and cleaned out some of the old stuff and we, mm-hmm. we kind of recommitted to art. Uh, so that, that was kind of the inspiration for this episode. And we thought, man, we love our art caddy. We should really talk about it. So, um, we don't have an art station. So some people have yeah. like an art station in their house. And I imagine that at some point we will have one when I, our I kids get older. Yeah. But even when we do, I still think that there is a place for the art caddy. And that's what we wanted to talk about. Like, why why would we use an art caddy? Well, the first thing for me is the portability of the art caddy. That's right. Um, so many times I need to, you know, bring it somewhere, bring it with me, go outside yeah, what if you want to, to do leaf rubbings leaf or rubbing, yeah. you want to you want to paint out yep. uh, outside on the patio table so that it's, you know, not in my house. Exactly. <laughs> that could be good too. And, and I find like because I have to go around and you know, you know, spoilers, we're going to have a nice little short bite about taking your art on the road as well and, and that will be on Thursday in the, car, yeah. in the car and so we'll talk a little bit about that on Thursday so keep an eye out for that but really just being portable it, it it kind of the portability was forced onto us because of the toddler the 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 toddler itis that we were suffering for you know right which years. is a, a a total you know bonus yeah. of this art caddy is that it can be put away and i think that's a big deal for those of you who homeschool at your kitchen table yeah. and we do a lot of homeschool at our kitchen table it's nice to put it away and trust me our kitchen table is suffering because it, of it. <laughs> it is yeah, there's some paint we just never got off there I just can't get it off i don't know how it's but anyways they we, said it was washable it's not definitely not washable. we digress yeah. um but it's also for safety's sake we can take this and put this up yeah. away from little fingers um so it is nice to have something that is portable that you can put away yeah. you know and, and so that that is a, a really great part of the art caddy um it also prevents your supplies from really ballooning to kind of like take over a whole cabinet. Not that having a lot of art supplies isn't great, mm-hmm. but what ends up happening, I think, when you have a bigger space for art is that lots of old, you know, you got dried up paints and you got markers that are, you know, equally dried up and old bits and pieces of whatever. And it just kind of starts growing uh, until the point where it's not all usable because we have, you know, real estate is as a premium in our caddy. Mm-hmm. We really have to keep it filled I mean, with. And, and you can, she can, you can see it at home, but like this caddy is, you know, it's all the space is being used. Yeah. It's stuffed. There isn't another, even another little uh, nook or cranny to put something no. in. And so we have to be more intentional about our supplies and make sure that they're all good, mm-hmm. that they are the right supplies. And so I think that that's kind of helpful because otherwise 
the art supplies can can grow. I've got, you know, I've I've had the situation before where we we did have a cabinet one time when our younger daughter was much younger before our mm-hmm. little one. And you know, it was like I don't know why is there a puddle of glitter glue? I don't know. You know, I mean there was just stuff just got sticky and gross and yeah. This is kind of nice because it's easy to take it with us. It's easy to clean it out. And we have to be a bit more careful about yeah. what goes in there. The, the other thing too what is bec- stays. because I'm so tall, it's, it's kind of at my head height. And so I can see into it and I can I can view into it. So that's another reason why I like to have it portable and up and higher. Um, like what you said, if it's down below in, like in, a, in a cabinet, it, I'm going to lose sight of things. Stuff's going to get stuff in the We did put some back. craft yeah. supplies down in a cabinet, and we almost never get into it because we, we can't see it. it. Yeah. Um, but, but the art caddy, because it lives well, on top now, of the refrigerator. Now, now, the, pl- now the Play-Doh lives in front of the, a lot of those craft supplies. Right. And, yeah, and, and it just becomes like yeah. the black hole of craft supplies. It I does. think there's like pipe cleaners back in there that you know we haven't seen in two years. Exactly. So <laughs> this is nice. Everything is visible. Yep. It's small, so you have to make sure that everything is quality that's in there. You can put it away. And you can take it with you when you need art on the go. And there are times when, you know, you got to get out paint on the driveway. So, and, and sometimes people they kind of blend the idea of crafting with art together, and, and that's fine. That's that's okay if you if you do that. And I don't have any grand opinion. And this could work way. for a craft yeah. caddy, by the way. You may put together a craft caddy as well. Um, my caddy doesn't have as much crafting materials. Like I do have some crafting stuff in there, like glue and scissors and there's some i think i have some pipe cleaners buried in there that's like more for paper crafting usually yeah and so i don't i don't have as much you know like stencils i don't have um little pieces of paper paper mache things of that nature as as much in this caddy as as, some. as some, some people who may enjoy doing crafting this is really purely an art caddy so we're talking about pencils markers crayons yes we have a we have an extensive list we will go through yeah, we'll go through it but basically i'm more into like the drawing mediums the paper the glue the scissors and things like that things that painting thing uh, yeah painting so the painting one lives next to the art caddy we have we have multiple caddies we have multiple caddies we'll talk about both of them. but so basically i focus more on paper and kind of like pencil marker crayon type of art that kind of goes with that so if you do more of what we have yeah if you do if you do a lot of like crafting and that type of stuff then you know you may have a separate caddy for just that but this is what we do yeah yeah absolutely and so you know what type of caddy should you get um you know, there's so many things out there that that hold things. <laughs> yes, right? things that hold things. Things that hold things. Storage containers. I need, I need a thing that holds the things. But you know, for us, we got a nice little kind of travel tote. It, no, it is not a travel tote. It's sort of like a travel tote. No, it is, it's totally not. Is it 100% art caddy? Is it designed for being an art caddy? No, it's not. It's a craft tote bag. It looks like a really nice woman's purse. Okay, listen, y'all. So the, my requirements for a caddy. It's a fuchsia brown You could purse. use like a milk crate. You could use a plastic bin. I happened to go garage sailing a number of years ago and came across a craft tote that I got for a dollar. And it basically is a fabric a tote with uh, a couple of big central yeah, dividers. Central wells. There's like three or four of them. Right, yeah. with big dividers. And then around the whole outside, there are pockets. Mm-hmm. And there are even some with flaps. And then on the bottom, it unzips. And there's a flat storage down there for stickers and stencils. Oh, and I, so, I'm totally not aware of the bottom zipper. Oh, wait, thing. what are you talking about? That's where the stencils All live. Right, guys, we're going to do this live. Hold on. I'm moving the mic. I did not know this, was a, this existed. What do you mean? I, it, the hidden compartment. Oh, that uh, one. That's a compartment. Yeah, that and it, it even has a slide out. It, so it's cool. It has a zip on the bottom. It slides out. There's a little tray in there. It slides out, and that's where all the stickers live. How did you not know this? You're like the primary user of the art caddy. I, 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 well, I guess I'm the only one that does stickers with the kids. You know what the thing is? The dogs uh, chuck it. Lives right there, so I oh, can't see. Oh, on top see, of the fridge. On top of the fridge, and I can't see past it. Well, yes. So hid, <laughs> hidden feature, there's a there's an extra hidden compartment in our craft bag. Anyway. I, I store my stickers elsewhere. I literally went to I went to a garage sale. I bought it for a buck, and I brought it home, and I was like, hey, we should put all our art stuff in here because it's easy. We can put it away, and, the, and you know the kids can't get into it when we're not looking and get paint yeah. everywhere. Um, 
you can find these. We'll put one in the show notes, the, the type of thing. And they're not that expensive. Or you can look at Goodwill or Value Village or, you know, what have you. Um, you could also get uh, like a, a little milk crate, some other well, type of plastic of, bin. That's kind of what we have for our, our caddy, which is kind of a rectangular milk crate type of thing. Yeah, we have like a like a wooden, a wooden crate, like a small yeah. wooden crate. Yeah. So I think that the important features of an art caddy, if it, one would have features... It needs to be easily transportable, either small enough that you can yeah. carry it easily in two hands or preferably has handles. The yeah, fact that ours has handles is really nice. Because the way I use my art caddy, I'm either literally, so I, I orient things so that they're easy to access or it's, I got to pull the whole thing down and get something that's more rare in the back or below. But most of the time I like to just access what I have. So it's kind of like a shelving system and then I it's nice. use the front. So I, I like having quick access because... A lot of times we talk about this a little bit in our, um, I think in our budgeting uh, episode, we talked about like take, removing those barrier, barriers to, to access. Oh, it was in our organizing episode. Yeah, organizing episode. So we, we talked about removing those barriers to access because it just saves time. It removes frustration. Yeah. Makes your life a lot easier. Having those things just, just strategically placed there where I can get a glue stick, I can get scissors, I can get paper, and I can get crayons in like... 10 seconds right because of the way that our caddy has pockets all around the outside yeah it's easy to kind of grab what you need i do have to have you reach it down because i'm not as tall as you to no, get on top of the fridge but not as um, blessed yeah it is nice and so we have we have scissors that go into it yeah, so and think about glue and yeah, all so think about things. that with respect to like what type of caddy you end up looking at if you're getting like a milk tote you know, you can imagine things kind of slipping down to the bottom and can, being hard to access. Yeah, I mean, really think about you want something large enough that it can contain all the supplies that you want to, that you're seeking to put into mm-hmm. it, and that it isn't just going to be a free for all. Really, something that has some sort of dividers. If you use a like a milk crate, then you know you could put something inside of it, um, like uh, reuse you know your plastic peanut butter jars and stuff. Yeah. You clean them out, and then you could use those to hold crayons or markers mm-hmm. or whatever. Some some way to segregate things. We definitely don't want a free for all because then it just becomes a jumbled crazy mess um if you do use a milk crate too you might want to put something on the bottom of it or on the sides so that it, nothing falls through the holes and that's one of the things it's kind of no. you know make sure that it's going to really contain all of your supplies no i liked your idea about you know getting like an old old peanut butter container or something like that because getting containers for containers because a lot of times within your art caddy you're going to have common things like whether it's markers like for example we use one of our own old sippy cups for the you know when the kids were young as my paintbrush holder in the in the thing so i can just take it out put it down they can pull out what they want put it back in when they're done and it's all clean and i can just go set it back in right having the ability to collect like things and and be able to just pull them out and just yeah. place them down i think is a super super important feature when you're thinking about building some type of modular setup within you know, whether it's an Arcadi or a box or something of that nature, being able to being able to contain everything together so that it's just organized in a in a in a, in a nice manner. Right. The more that organized, makes it more usable. Yeah. Right. The more organized it is, the more likely that everything's going to go back. You know, if everything has a place, more likely it'll go yeah, back right. there when you're done. I mean, I'm not. We're not guaranteeing anything, but you know, your mileage may vary. Um, <laughs> so, one of the other things about this caddy is it needs to be something that you absolutely 100% do not care about because it's going to be in somewhere or another kind of destroyed by the end of this, right? Yeah. It's for art. It's going to be messy. There's something's going to leak at some point. Yep. Um, so that's the other reason thinking about what kind of what kind of system that you use and whether it's going to stop leakage. Yeah, we had a, a leaky marker uh, at one point and it just kind of got in there and I had to like pull everything out and wipe it all down. So yeah, you're you're eventually going to get something where like maybe your Elmer's glue bottle will break or something of that nature or your glue stick will melt because it got hot one day in your house mm-hmm. for some reason. You know, that's always going to happen. So definitely think about like if you have an open crate that could leak into your, on top of your fridge, like for example. Or where, wherever, wherever you choose to put it. <laughs> wherever you choose to put it. We put it on top of the fridge, but you know, if you put it up on a shelf or something, the last thing you want is it to like leak down into like your cookbooks or something like that. Right. right. Yeah. I, I totally. And so I think that the, the caddy needs to definitely be something you don't care about. It needs to be large enough to hold all the supplies you want it to hold, but think about weight yeah. because once you load it down with stuff you the the idea of this if you want to have art in your house that's out all the time that's setting up an art art table and art station and that's kind of a little bit different than this conversation mm-hmm. you know we're we're thinking portable and so we really want to make sure that's something that we can pick up and take with us yep. so don't get a crate or something so big that it's going to be heavy um 
preference too on something that your kids could also carry. You know, if you're the only one who has to carry a big milk crate Mm -hmm. full of stuff, that's hard too. So really kind of think about what might work nicely for your family. Especially if you're including paper um, and for different mediums, like if you're doing watercolor papers or an oil type of, Mm -hmm. you know, something for oil paints or, or acrylic paints, those tend to be heavier duty paper. And if you have an 80 sheet, you know, 80 sheets of that, and then you have some like cardstock and then you have a sketchbook and then you have something else. All of a sudden you have three or 400 sheets of paper in your caddy. That's going to weigh a ton, you know, yeah. especially if you're lifting up and above your head. So just be, be aware of that. It does add weight fast. Yeah, it does add up. It really yeah, does. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about what goes into the caddy. Yeah. Yes. So we have a lot of things in ours, but some things for you to think of. It's obviously it's your caddy. You do it your way. Yep. Um, but, you know, we've got crayons and colored pencils, markers. We talked about glue sticks or you could do glue bottles. Best yep. of luck to you. We only do glue sticks in this house. We only do glue sticks. <laughs> uh, we have a thing of Mod Podge in there because we we have done some decoupage with our art caddy, <laughs> but um, you know, hole or craft punches, yep. um, yarn. The, the hole punches and the yarn are really big because I, you know, if you're getting into like kind of necklaces, like you were you were you were made a beautiful necklace this week. I, <laughs> I that I had nothing to do with, a bunch of hearts on an, on a string. They, but, they were punched out. Yeah, but just having hole punches and string, I think, is a big thing, especially if you're tying. You can bind off. books that way. Kids' yeah. books out of construction paper. Absolutely, absolutely. So I I think that's less crafty than um, papery. Yeah. You know, for that for that reason. Uh, two, the other thing to mention is like your your holes and craft punches and things really look for that at like thrift oh, yeah. man those are at goodwill all the time so if you want some cool so also like scissors and consider not just regular scissors decorative scissors but yeah, yeah. the zigzaggy yep. scissors that kind of stuff you can find that stuff at goodwill constantly people love to buy craft supplies that they never use and their losses your gain go to goodwill <laughs> yeah no absolutely they have a whole they very often have a whole section and they're always in bags mm-hmm. uh, if you go to goodwill you hit the books hit the games you know Get a pair of pants because you need them and head on over to the craft section. Oh, the craft section is great. It's actually really nice because you'll get like stamps in there. Right. So we keep rubber stamps as well in our our caddy with ink pads and you'll find that kind of stuff at Goodwill. Oftentimes you'll find rubber stamps or stencils. Stencils you can find at Goodwill often. Lots Um, of stickers as well. They'll have whole packages of them. Yeah. People buy lots of uh, scrapbooking type supplies. Supposedly like, you know, I was at my writer's group this week at the bookstore and supposedly stickers are a thing with people these days. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm not in touch with the kids. I'm our, not on the TikToks or the Snapchat. Our kids are very into stickers. So yes. yeah. So, um, you know, obviously your paper and you can decide, maybe you don't want to keep your paper in your caddy. You want to just keep mm. all of your, you know, other implements and then, you know, have a paper pad that you just grab and take with you. I mean, you know, you, up to you, but Absolutely. think about the different types of paper. We, You know, there's construction paper. You talked about watercolor paper. Maybe there's a sketchbook for each child with their name on mm-hmm. it. You know, think about what kind of paper you might want to include. Uh, we talked stickers, glitter, best no, of luck to you. No. We, there's no glitter in ours. I'm just saying. We're, we do not allow glitter we in We don't do house. glitter in this we house anymore. We don't do glitter anymore. in this we, house. We, we learned our lesson with glitter. <laughs> yeah, we paid for um, But uh, so then there's all the stuff to go with painting. So yes. there's paints, brushes, palette, cup. Yep. You know, we like we have a cup that holds our paint brushes. That's also our cup for water. We have an old bowl in we there. Have old bowls. We have an old kind of like yeah, the the paint palette. And then I have like right. an old plate that I, as well uses a paint paint palette. Right. So you can also use like watercolor pencils. Mm-hmm. Those could be something you use. Um, if you want to do some crafting, even glue onto paper like you know, pipe cleaners, pom poms. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked stamps and stencils. So also, if you want to have a have it in your caddy or have another caddy for it, you can have like clay and modeling tools. Yep. So that's something to think about. Wet wipes. Put lots, wet wipes lots. in your caddy. Just ask us how we know. Um, <laughs> because for some reason, you can't ever find a wet wipe. Quick and, and quickly. I feel like when you need a wet wipe with art and you're mm-hmm. using it with early learners. Um, it, it's a timely situation. You need it quickly before things go really pear shaped. Yep. So wet wipes in the art caddy, we highly recommend. Highly, and, and the hair clips too. I can never find a hair clip when I need it. Yeah, for like, girl dad problem. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, dad, yeah, dad of girls. So we also have an art smock in our caddy. Yep. It's a really thin one. I think we got it at like Dollar Tree. It doesn't yeah, have to be cheap. fancy, but something that rolls up really small, so it doesn't take up a lot of space. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, aprons or smocks or whatever. Or if you're you have an old T-shirt that your kids like to wear when they're doing art. I mean, think about that kind of stuff. Think about keeping it handy. It should be, in in our minds anyway, in this made up art caddy that you know we have dubbed. <laughs> it should be all the things that your child needs. 
You shouldn't have to like go back somewhere because this is mm-hmm. the kind of thing that we could say, hey, let's go do art at the park. We could grab our caddy, put it in the car, drive to the park, and we mm-hmm. should have everything we need for them to do art safely and for us to clean up that art and everything you know, together. So maybe you also want to put like, if you have space, maybe it's a roll of paper towels, yes, you know, I, I or use, paper plates. Paper use, plates are great. I use paper towels and paper plates all the time. So yeah, I mean, th- that's kind of our idea is that yep. we can take this and, and we can take it with us into nature or uh, there's times where we have to go, like you, you end up picking up our daughter from preschool. She was preschool a couple days a week and you have 45 minutes to kill before dance mm-hmm. class. This is a perfect time to pick up the art caddy and sit at a table at the park near there and you know do some art while we were mm-hmm. waiting for that to start. I mean, Absolutely. that kind of stuff. So that's where, or you know, what if you have a, an older sibling that's got sports practice or something yeah. and you've got to do something with your youngers. So these are ways that you can you could use your art caddy but make sure it's basically got everything that you need in a one stop shop for whatever medium you're working in yeah you you can try to do everything but you know if you can just limit it to the you know painting drawing coloring things of that nature i i like i like to limit it in that respect well and maybe yeah. you do different things i mean i think that yeah. that's one of the tips like that i don't have give. i don't have much clay or or the modeling clay or any of that stuff we we did a little bit of that maybe like a year or two ago but I haven't gotten back to it. Now that our daughter's in sculpture, though, it may, might make a resurgence. May, yeah. So, so those are the basic things we would probably include. Some of our tips for setting up a really good art caddy. Um, definitely consider the multiple caddy scenario. Then that's, you can keep them done. smaller. Yeah. Um, you can keep them more focused. Hey, this is our uh, sketching caddy, and it's got all of our paper and our pencils, crayons and pencils. Sh- sharpeners. Yep. And, uh, sharpeners. Oh, sharpeners is a good one. Um, it's got our colored pencils in it and markers, and it's got all that kind of stuff. And then over here, we have a paint caddy, and maybe we have a different caddy that's just all of our clay modeling stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, really, and maybe we have a caddy just for crafts that's got bits and buttons and things to glue and googly yep. eyes and all kinds of stuff like that. So... Um, yeah. So think about like what kind of art your family likes to do and definitely don't be afraid to split it up. We, we overflowed quickly into two. And I think that as time grows, we will probably add more. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, think about that and think about how you can repurpose some old items and make caddies. Especially in the way you end up using the caddy, like what you said, if if you end up sitting down, you're going to do some, you know, modeling or, or stuff of that nature. You don't want to have a huge caddy that has a bunch of paint or, you know, drawing supplies when you need your, you know, your, your clay yeah. and you need your stuff. Being a little bit more little, focused little is better. Stuff. Yeah. I think being focused because you can just bring it down, set it down on a table or set it down wherever you are and do those things. Once you clean up, everything goes back in, you put it back. Yeah, it just keeps it really very nice. focused. And, and I think it, the ease of use, I think you end up using it more because it's so focused in what it does. So bring mm-hmm. it down, do the activity. An hour later, you clean up nice. and put it away. You don't have to go gather all the supplies yeah. from the cabinet. Exactly. You know, and go, oh, hey, I need a little bit of this. I need a little bit of that. But even know? if you want to put it away in a cabinet, you may have kind of those storage containers that go into the cabinets and you just pull it out and say, okay, we're doing painting. Here comes the painting one. You put it on the table. So like, it doesn't matter where you end up putting it, but being organized and being focused, I think is a, is a good way to enable the activity in an easy way. Instead of saying, oh, we want to paint and you go, oh gosh, I got to go dig for all the painting yeah. supplies. Where are the, but if where you the could just again? pull it out, put it on the table, get the paper, put it down, and they could be painting within a minute or two. I think that just greases the skids and and enabling painting and art and all that Mm -hmm. stuff as part of your homeschool. It reduces that barrier, I think, definitely. Um, So, you know, the other thing is don't be afraid to rotate the supplies around. Maybe you want to keep your your caddy like really slim. And so, you know, this month it's going to be colored pencils and next month it'll be crayons and then it'll be markers. And you could just rotate the supplies in based on what's kind of current with your kids, what they're into. It keeps things fresh too. Maybe your kids are tired of seeing the same old caddy with the same old supplies. You can, you know, mix it up a little bit by doing some rotation. I keep a lot of paper in my caddy. And so a lot of times when I'm pulling things in and out, in and out, in and out, it can kind of get a little crazy. So like once I look up and say, that is too crazy, I just pull it down and I begin to do the clean out, the reorganization. And that tends to happen like once a month. And by doing that, I can add in new things, take things out. And just like what you said, I kind of have like this natural like, it begins to clutter itself and then I got to go and clean it out. And so every month or so I have to get in there and, and kind of clean it up. But 
you know, yeah, it has that built in mechanism of me looking at what we have. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, the kids are not into this anymore. I'm taking this out. Like I used to have a lot of coloring books up there and the kids are just not into the coloring books for some reason. I have like 20 coloring books and they rarely... They go through stages where they're like into yeah. it for a couple of weeks and then they're like out of it. They Our just, kids like yeah. more free form art. They like more that. free form art. They like me to tear out some pages, uh, blank paper, and they just go at it. And that's kind of what they're into. So I kind of had to learn to pull the coloring books out and just put in more like better, you know, coloring pages or um, not coloring pages, but like colored pages of like, you know, construction paper or... I have some heavy duty card stock in there mm -hmm. as well. Great for like cutting and, and whatnot. Um, I just moved all that in. I moved the coloring pages, yeah. the coloring books out. For a while we had a, a drawing book. Our daughter was yep. really into drawing animals and it was like a how to draw type book and we would keep it in the art caddy so that when she wanted to do her sketching, it was yep. right there for her. Yep. Absolutely. One of the other tips for the art caddy is do not include anything in the caddy that's breakable. I love to see those pictures of like the mason jars full of, you know, the paintbrushes and stuff. They look really cool. That's all great for a stationary <laughs> art you know, area. If you, have, if you have an art room or something, that might work well. But for a for a portable thing, please don't use anything <laughs> that's possibly breakable, <laughs> especially if you're going to take it to the park and stuff, even though it does look cool, farmhouse chic. Um, you can use recycled containers like we talked about, like peanut butter or whatever. You can use cans. Cans yep. also work great. Um, there's all kinds of things you can use, but really watch that nothing goes in that's breakable. And then I think the last tip from, from me anyway is remember that household items can absolutely be used for art. So maybe you want to think about cutting up a couple of sponges that you have, cotton balls, Q-tips. Maybe there's a, a old spray bottle that you have, some rags. So there can be things that you can repurpose from your home that can fit in great in your caddy yeah. and help enable art. It doesn't have to be going out and purchasing hundreds no. of dollars worth of supplies in order to fill this thing. No, that's definitely, I would agree with you. I'd, I'd, I'd say the most important thing about your art caddy is it shouldn't cost you a lot. Like what you said, you got this caddy for a buck. A lot of the supplies in here are, you know, cheap acquisitions from Goodwill, maybe like, an offhand purchase here or there from Walmart, but it's, it's well, really right. not a lot. And I'm not suggesting buying poor quality art supplies. Let me let me oh, rephrase yeah. a little bit here. When we buy things that are, when we buy things at like Goodwill and stuff, I'm Cray buying... Like crayons, I want them to be Crayola crayons. Yeah, just, like we're buying our, our crayons yeah. and our markers new and they're, yeah, they're going to be Crayolas, which is not the nicest brand of art supplies, but I think it's a very solid kid solid brand. kid brand. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, for you know the way kids use and abuse art supplies, yep. um, and Elmer's glue, and we buy good stuff there, but is and, and good paints and things. But as far as like stencils and stuff, those are the things that we sometimes get at thrift. That it's it's fine, you know, that stencil. I mean, you can get a lot of actually even good quality scissors at, at uh, thrift Absolutely. for yeah. cra crafting type, you know, uh, scrapbooking type yep. scissors and stuff. So yeah, buy quality paper buy quality supplies, but it really doesn't have to break the bank. And especially if you shop during back to school sale time, yeah. uh, which we just ended. So yeah. you, you pay attention for next year. Um, that's a great time. We always stock up. I'm looking over your shoulder at the 36 pack of, um, of glue sticks that we bought in back to school. The like funny thing I'm is not sure who needs 36 glue sticks. No, you but don't understand. The, I have been looking for this. I did not know it was in the paint caddy. So this is a great example of poor organization <laughs> right from us. Yeah. I was like, I'm losing. I, I, I went all around the house yesterday desperately looking for glue sticks. I'm like, I know I have a 12 pack that is unopened. I'm where are they? And I'm looking all over the place. Oh, that's more than 12, honey. That is a big pack. 12 pack. Ah, gotcha. Nope. 12 pack. It looks like 30 glue sticks. No, it does. It looks like the 30 glue stick one, but these are the, I don't know, maybe a little bigger or something, but yeah. I was oh, I, okay. Now I can see the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it looked bigger when it was in the caddy. I, I have look, seen big packs of those. I am currently now moving it to the correct caddy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway, so like, I think, yeah, I agree with you. You can I, stock up then. Though. You stock up then, but you know, from, from the standpoint, it should not cost a ton of money. That's, that's really the, the biggest, the biggest piece. I do, I do like to invest in good paper. That's yeah. kind of my big thing, is, um, especially when they're doing watercolors. The worst thing that I have is like if you just do like construction paper or even some decent sketch paper, it starts to curl up when it gets wet, and it's just like ah, it just it, it takes away from the watercolor experience. And so I get really good watercolor paper for them, but I don't use it for anything other than watercolors. So you know I, that's why I have different sheets. You can kind of see them there. I think they're right here. Go on the inside. Yeah, yeah. We have but several different types of paper. I have several different types of paper based on what they're trying to do. So definitely think about that when you're when you're thinking about filling up your art caddy or filling up your paper supplies. I really like spending good money on paper, and that's really the big thing for me because, you know, if 
if if it if if the art doesn't look good at the end to them and it starts to like warp the paper you know, even with the acrylic paints when it goes on pretty heavily starts to warp the paper at the end yeah i like to use the heavier paper for that even though it costs a little bit more um that is kind of a i i, I just don't want their art to like visually look weird at the end right of the day. yeah even though i throw away like 95 percent of it um <laughs> after it hangs up on the art wall for a little while for a little we're while, like all right it's out of here and our rule on the art wall just i mean if anybody else yeah. needs this and and can't your kids can't get rid of art we have we have a string up on an art wall with little uh, glitter clothespins mm-hmm. that hold up their art and there's only so many pins so when they come up with new art they have to decide what they're going to take off the wall <laughs> And when they take it off the wall, mommy gets to decide or daddy gets to decide what happens to it. And if it's a piece that I feel like is really representative of where they Mm. were at this time in their life, you know, it goes in the memory box. It goes in the memory box. (laughs) And if it's just a swirl of random color, it goes in the trash. But this way we we only have like, you know, six pieces of hanging art at any one time. And I, I like that. That plan. <laughs> the, the other thing that I like to do as well with paper, because I am spending a little bit more on paper, um, like on the sh- sketching paper or even on the watercolor paper, whenever I give them something to do, I'm always cutting those pages in half just so that they their mindset is, okay, here's my canvas. It's a lot smaller and I'm not wasting paper. If I gave them like a big sheet of paper, they would just mess up the whole paper. And then they go, where's another piece of paper? I like cutting those pages down in like almost in half. When I when the little one is yeah. doing her painting, I tend to pull out like four sheets and I cut them in half. And then sometimes even then I cut those in half and I give them her little pictures. So she just like is focusing on making this little picture the best because she's just going to slop paint on it anyways. And it's not going to look very good. Well, half the time they just do it right in the middle. Well, and, you know, she she slaps some paint and yeah. then she's like, okay, next, next. Yeah, next it's next, like, next. you know, if you keep them smaller, then yeah. it, it seems to help. But also on top of that, I also see that when they have more opportunity to make different choices on, like, okay, so I'm going to do this painting. Now I got a new piece of paper and they like pause for a second and they go, okay, I'm going to create something different. And by cutting up the paper, they get more opportunity more often to try to create different things. Yeah, And true. so there's... You know, in a painting session with my kids, I will lay out all the, you know, I will lay out all the, the covering on the, on the table and get all the paper and get everything set up. The little one gets like 10 sheets of paper, like the cut ones. Mm-hmm. And cause she's just going to crush through all those pages. The older one will tend to get one or two or, you know, she tends to go a little bit slower, a little bit more thoughtful, but she was the same at that age as well. She would just crush through like 10 pages. But doing that, I noticed she starts to change the colors with the little one. She's like mm-hmm. actually trying different things. Yeah, this things. one's all blue. Mixing, I'm going to do this with yellows. And, and yeah. yeah, she's mixing different colors and she's trying to create something different. And just having those smaller pieces of paper that are more high quality more often, I think she just has more experience to try yeah. different things and, and explore. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Absolutely. So, okay, well, hopefully, you know, you guys got... Go out there and get an art caddy. And, yeah, and, and I want to see a, pictures. Yes, we're gonna put, we'll post pictures and, and we'll also post a video as well. When we did our homeschooling spaces, that got real popular and everybody was sharing. So we'll we'll make sure to put that on the Facebook group as well. Everyone takes a picture of their art area and you know we'll put that up there for you guys to look at. We're going to continue with our new segment. Do, 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 do. What are we reading this week? And yes, so we're book gonna, of the week. Book of the week. So the, the older one uh, literally snuck downstairs today got her tablet, got her headphones, and like snuck away to to read the second book in the Wings of Fire series. This yes. would be the Lost Air, and I don't... Okay, give me one second. I'm going to look it up. Ariel, Tui T. Sutherland, I think is the name of the author. The Wings of Fire, you see them all over the place. The books are about dragons. and We'll put it in the show notes. We'll put it in the show notes. So she is big into the Wings of Fire series. It's very right popular. Now. So she had to wait quite a while between book one and book two to yeah, get it on that. audiobook from the library. Yeah. And so she is chomping at the bit. She loves the series. She will talk endlessly about all the dragons. I think we should try to read these books, Ariel. This is another yeah, situation. I'll get that, to them. This is another situation that we're running into where, you know, our daughter is reading books that we're not reading. And... She's telling us about them, and we're, yeah. we don't know anything about them because yeah. she's listening to them on audiobook. And so, really, really cool. She was really into that. And the little one, the little one is into Moonlight Ocean, which is yes. this cool uh, from this light beam series. Yeah. It's every page has got on the left. It has uh, words about you know about this, and this one, like the first one's like about all about sharks or whatever. And on the right hand side of the page, it has kind of a 
uh, it's like got like a gray film over the picture, and then it has a flashlight that you actually move. It's just a piece of white paper under there, but it highlights the things through it's the a, paper. I think it's a it's a it plays po- with the polarization. I, I don't know. I don't. Does it do that? I don't think. It, I think it just lightens the background because oh, what okay. it is is you have a you have this dark film on which all of the sea creatures are printed on, okay. and then behind it is a black background, okay. so you can't see it. But then you put this white flashlight beam and, and behind it. Up. It's just a piece yeah. of white paper, um, and they show up. Yeah, I didn't and know then, the mechanism. That they yeah, have. I think that's what it is. And then on the on the sheet, so you read all about the animal, and then at the bottom, it actually has animals to find in yeah, there. So she's been into this. She loves it. So I read the left hand side of the page for her at bedtime while she finds all the animals with the flashlight. And so there's another one, Moonlight Animals. We can link mm-hmm. them both in the show notes. Our older daughter loved that one when she was younger mm-hmm. too. Uh, it's not necessarily a preschool book. I think it's definitely better for, you know, kinder level yeah. would be appropriate. Um, but, but our she, younger daughter loves it right now. She's look, very look and finds it. have always been a big thing for both of our girls. Yeah, they they've, love They've enjoyed both of them. So anytime, you know, you can read while they're looking and finding things, it's been a big thing, big hit for both of them. So it's a cool mechanism. Yep. And we, we gave one, I think we gave Moonlight Animals to our daughter for Christmas, yep. maybe last year. She really loved that. And then when we saw Moonlight Ocean, we picked it up. So Absolutely. definitely check it out. Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!